Hi everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, today's video is going to be about the Wednesday's video, Q&A video today. I'm, uh, I'm in our heifer barn here that we were cleaning out on the video. As you can see, uh, we've got both sides cleaned out here. So we were able to get the, get these cleaned out a couple days after the videos. Our dealer came out that day, uh, checked what the issue was. was a temperature sensor on the exhaust they uh, didn't have one but they ordered it next day came out and put it on and then the following day we ended up finishing cleaning these pens out you'll have to wait till uh, Wednesday's video I did I did film it so yeah you'll uh, you'll get to see the rest of that then so there were uh, a few questions that I wanted to talk about uh, today uh, the first couple had to do with uh, the bedding and what we have underneath the bedding so the, uh, somebody had asked uh, why we use uh, deep bedding in these pens. Because uh, obviously the cows and the or the heifers are they're pooping and peeing in the straw here, so they're basically laying in their own poop and pee, and that that is true. So what, what we're trying to do is keep enough uh, clean straw bedded on top to keep them dry. You can see here these these pens are fairly dry now we put bedding in here yesterday and depending on uh, how many calves are in each pen how humid it is uh, what the temperature is kind of depends on how often we put bedding in here uh, there are some spots like around the water trough it's frozen now because it's been pretty colder the last few days but some of these areas will get wetter sooner and some of those spots will have uh, more bacteria in there obviously but with uh, heifers, dry cows, it's not as big of an issue as it would be with, say, uh, milking cows. Uh, the other question was about the clay floor underneath. So uh, underneath these pens, it's clay flooring, not concrete. Uh, part of the reason is cost. It'd be, uh, it's quite a bit cheaper to not put concrete in, in, uh, in all these pens, especially when we put bedding on it right away. Uh, there's there's a couple other reasons it's also uh, once we clean it out we put bedding back in and we start you know, from scratch basically with an empty pen with it being uh, clay underneath it's a little bit softer for the heifers and cows to stand up and lay down plus it gives them a little bit extra traction uh, when they're walking around their pen it uh, yeah we do have to be careful cleaning it out that we don't scoop into the clay and we're always taking a little out and it over time the pens will start to get lower and lower but uh, even in our, our calving barn is the same it's clay floor and that's we've had that barn for 12 years and it's I mean it gets lower but it's not terrible you have to just have to be careful with what you're what you're doing I guess the uh, last uh, question or comment that I wanted to talk about was uh, about why we're spreading solid manure now instead of uh, just before we plant crops in the springtime and it's a good question uh, fair question we uh, we like to spread our solid manure mainly in the fall and in the winter if we can depending on how much snow is out there if there's too much snow it becomes difficult to get around the field but it's uh, we also want that manure to be as close to the soil as we can so when it melts in the spring it doesn't uh, run off or move from where we spread it but it yeah usually if we have less than six inches of snow we will try to spread that during the winter time uh, with this solid manure i'm not really too concerned about uh, nutrient runoff because it's uh, it's mainly organic matter it's we're bedding these pens quite often because we want to make sure that they stay dry so the majority of the the manure what we would call our solid manure is straw and what is the nutrients that are in there specifically nitrogen it's uh, mainly organic nitrogen there's not a lot of uh, ammonia based nitrogen which ammonia based nitrogen is uh, more prone to uh, being lost to, into the atmosphere I guess uh, for lack of a better explanation for, for example our liquid manure is more uh, it's more ammonium there's more ammonium nitrogen in there than there is uh, organic nitrogen so that we definitely want to get incorporated whenever we do apply that which is what we do uh, we 
we typically have five or six hundred loads of solid manure to spread per year and it depending on how far we're going with it it takes 15 uh, up to an hour depending on how far the field is to do one load so you guys can figure out if we had to do 500 loads and it took on average 30 minutes it's not possible to do that in a couple days time right before uh, field right before field planting or even field cultivating it takes days weeks months to spread all of that manure even if we had a uh, I don't know five five tractors and five spreaders it still will take a significant amount of time so we try to spread that work out as much as we can uh, we will spread some in the spring but what I really dislike about sp spreading a lot of solid manure in the spring is it if we if we wait till spring and we don't have the right conditions then we didn't spread any then we end up with a big pile to spread the the next fall and in the spring you have to be careful that you're not causing a bunch of soil compaction because the spreader is it's heavy so we want to make sure that we're spreading on dry soils and if there's any moisture in there at all or if there's pockets of uh, wet areas in the fields we have to try to avoid them go around them because obviously we don't want to cause compaction and we definitely don't want to be getting stuck with that manure spreader We've done it before and it's, uh, it's a pain in the butt to get out. So yeah, I guess that's, that's why we, uh, we spread our solid manure in the winter time. We spread a lot in the fall because in the summertime, obviously once the crops are planted, we can't spread any of that manure. So we usually have a pretty good pile built up by fall. We try to spread as much as we can then. And then we'll, we'll uh, spread it basically as we clean these pens out over the winter and in the springtime if the conditions are right. Uh, yeah, I hope that kind of addressed that a little bit. So we do, we uh, nutrient sample all of our solid manure, we nutrient sample our liquid manure, and we're also uh, soil sampling every field that we spread manure on so that we know what we're spreading where and how much we need to spread on each field. The, the solid manure, I do give that some credit, but we, when I, we spread it on our own acres, I try to spread it very thin to try to cover all of our acres with a little bit instead of spreading a bunch on some of our acres and some on none of our acres, if that makes sense to you guys. Some of our neighbors uh, that want it do spread it a little bit thicker, but they typically, depending on how far it is, they, they might have a custom applicator spread it or if we spread it, we'll uh, yeah, tr try to work with them on when they want it spread, I guess. But that'll be, uh, that'll be it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching and we'll uh, hopefully see you next Wednesday when we finish cleaning out these pens.